Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Tidy from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 80 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of the double stingray technique for recanalizing a CTO with a bifurcation of the distal cap. The patient had a right coronary artery CTO with an ambiguous proximal cap, a length of approximately 20 millimeters and most importantly, a bifurcation of the distal cap of a large PDA and a large posterior lateral vessel. The PDA was filling via epicardiac collateral from the LAD and the posterior lateral was filling retrograde from the posterior descending artery. So an important part of this case was to achieve recanalization of both the PDA and the posterior lateral branch. And to achieve this, our plan was to start with undergrade wire escalation to see if we could resolve the proximal cap ambiguity. If it didn't work, try retrograde and then use undergrade dissection reentry only as a last resort if we were unable to cross undergrade or with the retrograde approach. We used a Corsair microcatheter and tried several guide wires, filter XT, pilot 200, and Gaia second. However, they tended to enter into bridging collaterals and we were not able to achieve much success. We therefore switched to a retrograde approach. Although the biggest collateral was the epicardial from the distal LAD, crossing through septals is safer. So before going there, we first tried surfing of several of the septal branches. However, surfing was unsuccessful, both in the more proximal as well as the middle and the more distal septal branches. We finally did an attempt to cross through the epicardial collateral from the distal LAD. However, the wire would not cross past that area of tortuosity of the epicardial collateral. We went then back into undergrade attempt. We used the Corsair microcaster and the Pilot 200 wire, and now we seem to be going in the right direction. Look like we've resolved the ambiguity, and the wire seems to be within a line of uh, lumen in the middle part of the right coronary artery. However, with further advancement, the wire went subintimal, and now we have a subintimal wire close to the distal cap. The challenge here is that if we re-enter into one of those two branches, the other branch may become occluded. So strategically, the best way to approach this is not attempt re-entering the PDA first, because then we would lose flow into the posterior lateral, which is a large branch, and the patient would likely become very scheming and possibly have a myocardial infarction. Instead, we thought the best way would be to re-enter into the posterior lateral first, and then re-enter into the PDA. We formed a knuckle with a filter XT wire. The knuckle advanced into the posterior lateral, which was our target vessel. And then we attempted re-entry using the Stingray balloon. The distal target seemed to be of um, good caliber. We tried the stick and swap technique. However, the wire did not seem to be in the right position. To be 100% sure, we did intravascular ultrasound and I was saw that actually we were in the false lumen and the true lumen was still having flow but was adjacent to where our wire was. And that's an important uh, thing to have in mind. We do not want to put stents here because then the chance of recanalizing the vessel would be very, very slim since there was no retrograde option here anyway. So whenever there is doubt as to whether distal true lumen entry is achieved, doing the IVUS can be a very useful way to be certain of our wire position. It was very challenging to re-enter, however, moving the re-entry zone, the so-called bobsled technique, and then use the double blind stick and swap, sticking on both sides of the stingray balloon and then changing for the pilot wire, we were finally able to re-enter into the distal true lumen. Then to re-enter into the PDA, we used a, a twin pass torque microcatheter, which is a very torqueable dual lumen microcatheter. And then we're able to advance a pilot 200 wire subintimally into the PDA. We used a stingray to re-enter. Once again, the double blind stick and swap technique, sticking on both sides of the stingray balloon. And much easier than the posterior lateral, we were able to advance a pilot 200 all the way into the PDA. Given that we have an important bifurcation with subintimal dissection on both sides, we decided to use an upfront two stand strategy. We predilated both uh, branches and then we deployed uh, a stand into the posterior lateral vessel using the DK crash technique. 
we crushed the stand with a balloon in the main vessel and then we rewired and did the first kiss inflation we then insert the second stand into the PDA the stand was deployed the twin pass torque microcatheter was used to wire back into the posterior lateral and then we did the kiss balloon inflation as well as proximal vessel optimization we then placed additional stands in the mid and the proximal right coronary all the way to the ostium and we were finally able to achieve a nice result with T3 flow in both the PDA as well as the right posterior lateral. It was a long procedure with long fluoroscopy time and relatively high radiation dose as well as contrast dose. However, the patient had an uneventful recovery, did not have any radiation, skin injury or kidney injury and uh, was angina free during follow up. This case uh, illustrates several important points. The first is that uh, changing the strategy during CTO PCI is very important to be successful. Sometimes the initially selected strategies don't work and doing something different is the key to success as is persisting and trying the different techniques. In about 20% uh, of retrograde cases we're unable to cross the collaterals as happened in this case and uh, when you have a bifurcation both at the proximal and the distal cap it is important to keep patency of both the branches and this can be achieved by either using an undergrade wire escalation technique or the retrograde or if uh, the sexual re-entry is required as in this case by essentially doing re-entry in both branches of the bifurcation thank you <laughs>